Welcome, welcome to Home Keepers. Hello, and my friends, so glad to be with you today. And just want to thank you for being there. And I'm hopeful and reasonably sure that there are brand new viewers out there. So you're one of us now. Hope that you will continue to join us. We are a program about the home. And if there's one thing I believe that's really needed across the board are the homes of America to be strengthened. I had an expert on not too long ago about education and, and um, she spoke about the kids there that have no father in the home. And you know, when you get into the details and all, you realize how very much our homes need to be repaired and they need a lot of prayer. So that's kind of what we're about. And um, we always have wonderful guests. My guest today is from South Florida. Uh, he actually uh, attends a church I'm very familiar with, the Church of All Nations in Boca Raton. And it's Dr. William Valmere. And he has written this wonderful book called The Vanguard Leader. Now I have been a leader in various instances for many, many years. Oh, I wish I had read this book before I ever, ever had any kind of a leadership role. I cannot really uh, just urge you enough to get this book. And after you meet the author, I think you'll really be inspired. I'm going to join Stephanie for, get this, this is the name of the recipe, your bacon me crazy potato salad. So maybe you've already figured out this potato salad has bacon in it. Uh, we'll put it all together for you. And wonderful thing about potato salad, you just do it your way. Uh, before I join her though, I again want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for your donations, for the gifts you give to this ministry to keep it going. And I would like for you to check out this information. You can write to us at Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758, or 1-800-229-0059 for the rest of you good folks who use credit cards, debit cards. Uh, it all works, and we thank you so very, very much. That's the way the work of the Lord is financed, and we thank you. And I'm over here with Stephanie now. Uh, she's Christmas girl all, all year round. Let them see your shirt. Huh? I got yes, bells she, uh, on. Uh -huh. All year round, she's into Christmas. And you know what? I like that. I, I love that. Not everyone does. <laughs> I do. I, I truly do. She has the spirit year round. So, uh, like I said at the top, this is probably potato salad with bacon in it, right? Yes. Well, this is, it's called You're Baking Me Crazy, but you could also call it like Welcome to the South because we're cooking in baking grease. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I saw a thing the other day where, you know, the homes used to have a can on the stove and they dump all the grease in it. I was just it. saying, my husband's grandmother used to cook everything in bacon grease. Like the eggs that she'd serve her husband in the morning was cooked like in so much bacon grease. And they didn't die when they were 20. No, they? they were in their 80s or 90s. I mean, they worked hard <laughs> yeah. though. I think they worked it all out, you know. I assume all this needs to be. Yeah, so you have two cups of, of mayonnaise. You mm -hmm. have two tablespoons of Dijon. You have a three quarter teaspoon of dill weed, a half a teaspoon of salt, and a quarter teaspoon mm -hmm. of celery seed. Mm -hmm. You're going to mix that all up. I have an entire pound of bacon that was chopped up. That's mm -hmm. a crazy amount of bacon. I have onion that I'm cooking in bacon grease, and then I'm going to put some celery in. And we have and two and a half pounds of red potatoes that are already boiled and cut up. This and the wonderful thing so about delicious. this, of course, you can take it to a picnic or anything, but you can sure make it ahead of time. And let me tell you, this already smells so good because it's onions in baking grease. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and put the celery in. You know, they do everything else. Will there be a day some out in the future? There will be smell of vision I'm sure of for, it. For the Food Network, anyway. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I am sure of it. Does Perfect. the bacon go in here? Um, yeah. Do you want me to put it in? Sure. Wait, wait. Let me make sure. Okay. I keep reading it over and over and over. Reserve, add onion, bacon, and <laughs> remaining bacon to potatoes. Yes. Okay. So let me saute this for a minute. I wonder how many of our viewers really um, follow the recipe Yeah. You know what closely? would be fun? If every once in a while we posted the recipe early, okay? Uh -huh. And then people could get the ingredients, and we then they make could, it together. They could cook it with us. Yes. Wouldn't that be fun? Would be great. Yeah, maybe we should start thinking about it's, that. Well, 
what if we did it on Zoom and we could all be together? Would you guys like to Zoom with us? How much fun would that be? <laughs> Herman Bailey's doing a lot of Zoom. Yes. He, uh, it's one way to really get national and international guests. Yeah. You can Zoom with us, but only if you allow your pets to join in. Yes. Those are the best Zooms ever when the cats and the dogs uh -huh. join in. <laughs> Okay, you want to put your sauce in? The other day, Herman Bailey talked to a pastor in Vietnam. Isn't that And insane? I'm telling you, it was as clear. That is crazy. Yeah. It's exciting. Yeah, this should, probably should have went in first, but. It was, oh, well. Cooking on the fly here. Mm-hmm. Nice. This is going to taste delicious. I have a feeling a lot of I our, thought that was a lot of mayonnaise, but it's really not. It really isn't. Oh, I got jumpers. This needs to cook a lot longer, mm -hmm. but I'm going to go ahead and put it in. We're going to have crunchy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, bacon grease. It's really, really good. <laughs> well, I think, like I said at the top of the show, you can make potato salad any way you want it. Oh, for sure. This is just... Do it your way. There's yes. a song. There's no that. Um, egg in this one, which is different. Uh-huh. And there's Dijon mustard, and you could use yellow mustard, it says, but here, would you like me to help? Yeah, this this is really different than Thank any you. potato salad I've ever heard of. Yeah. Anxious we like to, to do different sometimes. Take a bite? Yes. Let me just get And then you chill this for a while. Mmm. All those flavors will marry together, and it will be delicious. You know, we, uh, our new, on our New Year's show, I hope you saw it, but... Um, she gave a wonderful testimony that I think we'll, we'll go over that again sometime. Okay. Um, the kind of thing people need to hear. Listen, it's only <laughs> only God. It, it could only be God in that testimony. Mm -hmm. I mean, seriously. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we we got to go yeah. over that okay, again. Okay, here we go. Mm. Very good. Mmm. That's delicious. So good. I think that grease gave us a good flavor. <laughs> so good. <laughs> if you want this recipe. Information's coming up on your screen. Uh, get it your way. That's that song that have it your way. Yeah, that's what's true about our recipes. My way. Get it the yeah. way you want it. <laughs> and um, then I want you to meet my guest, uh, Dr. Valmir. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, you may receive it by contacting us through social media as listed on the screen. When requesting a copy through the mail, be sure to include a self-addressed stamped envelope. Thank you, and please know we always appreciate hearing from our viewers. I am so delighted to introduce to you my guest, Dr. William Valmere. And I told him he speaks English the correct way. Uh, when I heard, I first thought, uh, welcome, welcome, Doctor. Well, thank you, thank you. For I first me. thought South Africa, but you said Haiti. I am from Haiti. I love. It's got more of an English right. sound to it. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, I think Americans get a little bit sloppy. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes. Uh, but you've been in America for a long time. Thirty years now. Mm -hmm. um, and. Um, are you, are you in the ministry? I, I know we can technically say that sure. all of us are. Yes, I am ordained. Mm -hmm. um, I am an ordained minister. I teach theology for Southeastern University and mm -hmm. several other schools. Um, I have been in ministry since, I want to say the late 90s, mm -hmm. 1997. Uh -huh. So I'm grateful to be given the opportunity to serve in the kingdom of God and to serve humanity in various ways. Yeah. Is this your first book? No, this is my third book. Your actually. third book, okay. This is my third book. Um, I really, truly want to rec uh, recommend this book to you. And as we talk about it, um, you'll know why. I, I mentioned at the top of the show, I've been in a lot of leadership positions. And oh, this, this would have been such a blessing, wow. giving me a lot of shortcuts. And uh, I think anybody could benefit from it. But even if you're a Sunday school teacher, pastor, it'll give you a lot of understanding of dealing with humanity. Where did you get the idea for it? Well, you know, I, I have been influenced by leaders all of my life. My dad was a pastor for over 40 years, very heavily involved in the Wesleyan Church in Haiti. Mm -hmm. uh, and then since I came to the U.S., I developed a passion for leadership. 
Uh, I've been mentored by many, many, many great leaders, including John Maxwell and uh, Bishop T.D. Jakes and mm -hmm. others. Um, I'm also an educator, so I teach um, in various levels, uh, secondary high school as well as college and university, and I'm working now with doctoral students. So leadership to me is important because um, everything rises and falls on leadership, just mm -hmm. as John Maxwell often says. So I believe now is the time for us to have transformational leaders to help people and help the next generation with all of the different challenges that we are facing right now. Yeah, you know, I was raised in a pastor's home and you know some of my family, they're all in the ministry. But um, I don't know where I got it, but I've repeated it many times. When I hear of church, mm -hmm. church problem here, there, I say everything descends from leadership, but sure. I would say everything descends from the pulpit mm. because uh, that's the leader. That's right. That's the leader of the church. Uh, do you have a favorite leader? I mean, if you're going to choose between Maxwell and T.D. Jakes, that's, that's, a, that's a hard choice. But they're very different, too. They are. They are and their, their sphere of influence is pretty different in many ways because while John Maxwell, God has given him a passion to help people outside of the church, mm -hmm. and if, even though in many ways Bishop Jakes is doing the same thing, however, Bishop Jakes' audience is really mostly Christian. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and I, I glean from both of them, and I've been honored and humbled to have the opportunity to learn from them. Did you travel some with uh, Doc, Dr. Jakes, or he's a bishop, right? Bishop Jake? Yes, yeah. uh, and in fact, in 2019, I had the opportunity to travel with him to Ghana, and uh, we were part of some ministry endeavors, some humanitarian efforts that he was doing. He started a, um, a partnership with Compassion International, where they are helping orphans and kids that, uh, you know, are in poverty. Mm -hmm. And so I had the opportunity, along with a small group of people, to travel with him to Africa. Uh, they both fascinate me, mm -hmm. but uh, Bishop Jakes, if I remember the story, he kind of had a small church, was it in Virginia somewhere? West Virginia. And then, then, I don't remember the details, but it was like, boom. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there he was. So he must have had to do a really quick learn yes. on leadership. Absolutely, and the idea is that God gives us vision but we have to make room and space for the vision to grow. And actually in West Virginia, uh, as he refers to all the time, it, that it was too small. And God wanted to, you know, mm -hmm. enlarge his territory, enlarge his effort and influence and impact. So he had to move to Dallas. That happened rather quickly, didn't it? It did. It did happen really if, quickly. If memory serves me, I think Paul Crouch heard him preach once. Yes. And he puts him on That's TV right. and boom. That's right. There we are. And... Um, there's got to be a lot to be learned from short-term lessons, which mm -hmm. probably was his experience. Absolutely, and and this is the one of the things that I talk about in the book. Uh, we have to understand the um, the science of vision execution. Science. The, the science of vision execution, mm -hmm. and when we look at the word vision, you can look at the acronym itself. First, the letter V stands to visualize. You have to be able to see where God is taking you. Number two, you have to initiate, take the steps necessary to get there. That may require a strategic plan. It may require some personal growth. It may require that you receive training. And S is to strategize. And strategy to me is to uh, have an ability to coordinate the resources that God has placed before you, given you access to. Mm -hmm. And so vision, V, visualize, I, initiate, and S is to strategize. But the second I is to institutionalize. The Bible talked about writing the vision in Habakkuk yes. 2 verse 2 and make it plain so that those who read it may run with it. So we have to be able to really institutionalize our vision by to a mission statement mm -hmm. and a vision statement. And then the letter O is to organize. We need to organize our people, mobilize mm -hmm. them, the gifts that we have at our disposal. And then lastly, how, why do we do uh, all of this? So that we can meet the needs, needs of yeah. people. That's, that is great. Yeah. The name of the book is The Vanguard Leader. And a vanguard, is that a group of troops? It has several meanings, it right? It does. But they're up front. They're absolutely. the leaders. That, absolutely. That, hence the, the subtitle. 
uh, great leaders lead from the front. You know, the idea, you cannot lead if you do not have followers. You can't be a leader <laughs> if you don't Basic. have followers, <laughs> right? And so the idea, uh, the leader models the way. The leader shows the way. The leader is someone who is an example. And I like to think of it now in the 21st century, we need to be very strategic. We need to be very innovative, courageous, to really lead people in, with integrity and courage. And that's what we need. And that's why the idea of the vanguard leader, think of um, a lion leading mm -hmm. a pride of lions. And that's why we have in front of the book, mm -hmm. I showed the lion there and a, the tribe of lion, a pride of lion behind. Mm -hmm. and, and it's very important to understand what we do today affect the next generation. Mm -hmm. And so. Now my viewers have heard me many times I'll try to get it across. You can read a book, maybe one paragraph, maybe one statement that changes everything. Mm -hmm. And I certainly encourage pastors to get this because I was a leader and mm -hmm. quite a lot of people at different times. You know, my greatest weakness, and I look back, I could have accomplished more. I don't know how to delegate. Mm -hmm. And uh, that is so important. I look back and think, yeah. kill yourself when other people could have helped you. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, um, the uh, idea of that, that Christian leader, mm -hmm. it's, it's kind of a fine line because you got to be firm. You got to yes. know where you're going. You got to really be what a leader embodies, but also that gentle love of Christ mm -hmm. and considering the person and their total being. Absolutely. And there's a, a balance. You know, you have to be passionate, mm -hmm. but you also have to have compassion. Mm -hmm. And so this, the idea of ruling with a, you know, an iron fist, and that's what a lot of people think of leadership. Yeah. Having grown in Haiti mm -hmm. under a dictatorship, mm -hmm. my exposure to leadership mostly was very negative. Mm -hmm. However, in my home with my father, who was a leader in the church, but also a leader at home, mm -hmm. he showed us the idea of being compassionate, of leading with compassion, with courage, but yet understand that people have needs that you have to meet. And in the book, I talked about how uh, leadership begins from within. It begins with us, and especially for Christians. Uh, we like to see everybody, you know, transform into this giant spiritually but yet we are not modeling what it takes to be that. And it takes a, an inner work of the Holy Spirit to really transform our lives from within so that we then manifest that on the outside. And it's totally, completely different, this leadership, mm -hmm. than from the world with their bravado and mm -hmm. make Absolutely. way for me. Yeah. Uh, I had a gentleman on not, not too long ago who wrote pretty big book on leading from your knees mm. and uh, the attributes of Christian leadership mm. are much different yes. than from the world. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. You know, there's an, uh, uh, the late Peter Drucker, uh, it's one of my favorite uh, quote, and I, I alluded to it there's in the book. There's some great quotes in there, by the way, making some good sermon Praise titles. Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. He said this, that very important. He said, the three most charismatic leaders of the 20th century afflicted more hurt, more pain and suffering than any other three trios in history. And he's talking about Hitler, Stalin, and Mao. And one of the last things he said that wow. was, he said something very powerful. He said, leadership, what matters in leadership is not your charisma, but what matters in leadership is your mission. What are we here for? Oh, you need to repeat that. That's powerful. <laughs> you know, so he said the three most charismatic leaders of the 20th century mm -hmm. inflicted more suffering mm -hmm. to people. And you're talking about Hitler? Hitler, Stalin, Stalin and Mao. Killed millions, millions, and millions of, of people. people. And they were very popular in their time. And then he said something that was very important. He said, what matters is not their charisma. So they were able to have a lot of following because of their ability to speak and mm -hmm. persuade people to follow them. But yet, we need to understand that what matters in, in leadership is the mission, the leader's mission. What is the leader's mission? What is their intent? What are they there for? 
And so that's one of the things that we as leaders, I talked about purpose in the book. I talked about having an idea of what it is that you are called to do. Mm -hmm. What is your calling? So for pastors, we are called to proclaim Christ and we are also called to bring healing to people. And we are called to lead the flock to mm -hmm. the great shepherd. Mm -hmm. You know, in the business sector, a leader has a vision. The mis the, they have a mission in their business or their institution. Mm -hmm. And they have to really uh, cast out the vision to the people so that the people that work with them will fulfill the vision. So we have the Great Commission. Yes, and what those demonic leaders mm -hmm. had was a charisma of mm -hmm. speech mm -hmm. and... And see, there's where the Holy Spirit yeah. can check you. Absolutely. Because there, there can be some snakes in Absolutely. the church. Absolutely. Uh, and I do think in, in the area of leadership, you need the power of the Holy Spirit to, to distinguish. Um, Absolutely. Now, how does a leader take criticism? Because you can't be real thin-skinned no. and be effective, and you will always be criticized. I can vouch for that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and, and this is, uh, I think, a very good point that you bring up. A lot of people are not teachable. They don't have a teachable spirit. Mm -hmm. And as leaders, we have to model humility. Ooh, that's good. Yeah. We have to model integrity, mm -hmm. but also the art of listening. We have yeah. to listen. Mm -hmm. Just as Christians are called to listen to wise counsels, you know, a lot of leaders don't listen to wise counsel, mm -hmm. and they don't listen to the whispers of the Holy Spirit, the conviction of the Holy Spirit, who uses the Word of God, which is our lamp and our, mm -hmm. you know, guide to bring light and shed light to issues that we are mm -hmm. dealing with. And so that's a, an art, it's a science of learning to hear the voice of God and learning how to apply what it is that God is asking us to do. Mm -hmm. Boy, that's good stuff. Um, if you just join me, I'm talking to Dr. William Balmere, and the book is The Vanguard Leader. And I don't want you to think just in terms of somebody that's got several thousand following. No, there are great points in here for mothers and dads. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> because they're, they're the number one leader. Yes, absolutely. It starts and, in the home. Mm -hmm. and, and all these basic things uh, really do apply. Um, you have a lot of great quotes in here from Drucker to Disney, Walt mm -hmm. Disney, mm -hmm. and all uh, things that seem to embody what leadership is really all about. Absolutely. And the, I, I don't want to make things complicated. No. See, we tend to do that. We tend to make things harder than they mm -hmm. should be, and we complicate things. And one of the things that I try to do in the book is to make it very practical that people can contextualize mm -hmm. the concepts and the principles and apply it right where they are. In fact, one of the chapters is start right where you are. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's the idea. We need to start right where we are. And I talked about daily assessment. We all have weaknesses. We all have strength. And a lot of us, we try to make things uh, happen by accident. Leadership requires that you are intentional. Intentional about your weaknesses. Intentional about your strength. Being teachable, meaning that if I need help in an area, leaders don't like to ask help. Mm -hmm. You know, see, that's why you talked about the issues of, uh, you know, having a hard time to delegate. <laughs> that's me. <laughs> that would you be know? me. <laughs> and we all go through this process of learning, mm -hmm. and, and that's very important. Yeah, so it's a process. <laughs> um, he, has, he has so many examples here, and there are great examples in the world sure. of, uh, of great leaders. And, and we we got two or three minutes left. Another place where um, I would not get a really good grade, it's writing things down. R write mm -hmm. the vision. That's, that's right out of Scripture, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, boy, th looking back, that could save you an awful lot of time. Sure. Clear your mind, sit down, get a piece of paper and a pencil. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I teach... At, uh, at you know, different levels. The only level I have not taught is elementary. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so one of the things I tell my students and I tell people that I lead and coach, think of your life in decades. To think of your life in decades because from one to nine years old, you are pre preparing for your teens. 
from 10 to 19, you are preparing for your 20s. From 20 to 29, you're preparing for your 30s, and so on and so forth. So I like to tell people, where do you see yourself in 10 years? So for the audience, I would ask you to think. We're ending 2020. Mm -hmm. Where do you yeah. see yourself by the end of 2030? 10 years from now. I wonder how many people think of that. <laughs> and so one of the things that you do is the dreams and the aspirations yeah. and the things that you believe you've been inspired and perhaps that's your purpose in life, What the reason why you were born. Write these down. And then when you write them down and you're thinking in a 10 year span, what do I need to do to accomplish these things in 10 years? For me, it was, I was my early 20s and I was called, I believe I was called into ministry and I was called mm -hmm. to teach. And I realized you cannot give what you don't have. So I jot down the things that I need to do to become that teacher to answer the call, mm -hmm. and whether it be education, training, seminary, all of that, and wow. I wrote it down and I said, well, it's gonna take me four years for an undergrad, it's gonna take me this for this, and, and that was my blueprint. That was the blueprint. And it, you don't have to be a rocket scientist. You just, God has given you all mm -hmm. of the tools that you need, mm -hmm. you just need to strategize mm -hmm. and you need to write things down. <laughs> now, do you hold seminars and conferences? I do, I do, and I'm uh, a leadership consultant with John Maxwell. Yes, so uh, we've had the website up there for uh, quite a while. I hope you wrote it down because if you ever get an opportunity to go to one of his workshops or um, any kind of a seminar that he might have, I think it would be such a blessing. And I push this because I did have mm -hmm. experience as a minister of music. Sure. I would always ask the church to send me. Mm -hmm. to a conference and it, it was just wonderful to change the music program. Yeah. Um, so I know what you're saying, but I, would, I wouldn't mind attending one of your conferences oh, that'd myself. Be, that'd be I honored. <laughs> thank you for coming. Oh, thanks yes. for having me. If you're ever in the area again, let me know. Certainly, okay, I will do, I will. And I hope you got that website. Um, thank you for having me again. Sure. I want to remind you, we have people right now that are by a telephone if you need to pray with someone. Um, maybe he has sparked some things in your mind that you'd really like to pray about, do it now. And uh, call the number on your screen and someone will pray with you. You can agree together. There's power in, in agreement, you know, Amen. when you have someone praying along with you. And this is such an important subject and we've barely skimmed the surface of it. So hope you got the website. And please remember, my friend, there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless you. Amen. If you should miss a Homekeepers program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN Programs and then on Homekeepers.